Hello everybody, my name is Eric and today we're going to be taking a, a look at gaming or custom Windows ISOs, whatever they're called. Uh, now I already made a video about Atlas and why you should not use that, but I'm going to do this more generally about the concept. Now this is inspired by a member of my Discord getting probably the worst malware infection I have ever seen. And to be clear, the ISO he used was not infected. The problem was the ISO he used had obliterated all of the security features in his Windows install, and then he uh, somehow managed to install a boot kit that he uh, he ultimately just bought a different SSD to solve the problem. So yes, getting rid of your security features, especially if you're in the gaming community, where unfortunately people do like to rat each other, bad idea. But first of all, before we talk about security, let's talk about performance. Because if we can debunk the ridiculousness of this, we don't have to spend, uh, we, it's not a trade-off between security and performance, it is simply losing security. So here is a guy who's actually benchmarked the ISOs, and even though he, so this is Counter-Strike 2, and it seems like depending on the benchmark, sometimes these trade, but it's all within margin of error. Now, stock 11 is actually six frames a second ahead of Debloated, ahead of Atlas, ahead of uh, Tiny. Uh, in fact, stock 11 is, oh, and what is going on with WinX Lite? That's the only one that looks significantly off. Uh, now, this guy ran a bunch of benchmarks, and you can see that some of them have different numbers. Here, this one, Debloated, is coming in a bit ahead, uh, but you, you can easily tell this is within margin of error. And deep loading is fine, as long as you're just removing apps. The worst thing it can do is cause... I, I still don't hugely recommend it just because it can cause problems down the line with updates, but okay. Uh, but then, as we get into these more extreme ones, they make serious tweaks, like removing Windows Defender, uh, disabling updates. I don't mean, like, turning it off, I mean getting rid of the infrastructure. So if there's a critical vulnerability, you've got to reinstall Windows. Uh, and here again... Windows 11 default is actually near the top of the custom ISO. So a few that I hear about, Ghost Ghost Spectre is a popular one. Now let's see where we can find the download for Ghost Spectre. Uh, okay, so this is three gigabytes. That's quite a bit smaller than a retail uh, ISO. Now let's go just look at some other options. And then let's just look at this channel because this guy actually at least ran the test on who is doing the best job at the so-called debloating. And there is a clear winner, although a lot of these are quite old. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, Pable OS 1809. Uh, and there is a significant reduction in RAM use. It seems like Pable OS is essentially lost media. It was Okay, so the link didn't work and we found a Discord. And this is truly bizarre. So these are the, okay, this is where someone was saying, do you know where to buy it? People, people fall for this. People are actually this gullible. Uh, okay, don't, don't, don't pay for this. Okay, ethernet now. Okay, I want to read the description for this ridiculousness. Two simple CMD files that tweak your network drivers. This has not been useful since Windows 2000. Try both and decide which one works best for you. Okay. How about no? AMD hidden BIOS NVIDIA. Hidden BIOS. I'm guessing that's like the AMD CBS BIOS. Uh, if you select no hidden dry. Bruh, like, I, I don't even, I, I, I don't even know what to say. Okay. Okay, so we had to go with Windows 11, but we do now have a Fox OS downloading. You have connection issues. That's the trouble is when you go this deep into these uh, tweaks, uh, did they actually strip the HCP from the system? Well, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out what they've done. But I, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of in shock at this point. Okay, so here is Ghost Spectre. This is the first, and this one at least it's uh, freely available. This is 21H2. And, uh, you know, I'm not expecting it to Oh, okay, okay. It's fairly customized. Only installer. Okay, so... Oh, we have to... Okay, so... Set up installing. They've added a few things. Okay, they've made the uh, Windows installer a lot less readable. Okay, compact. I'm gonna guess that Super Light comes with less stuff. And plus def is gonna be plus defender. Uh, and in fact... 
Look, much as I don't recommend it, the only tweak that these ISOs are going to make that's going to have any effect on performance is Defender, purely because there is a performance hit, and there is not a gaming latency hit. None of this will affect your gaming latency. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. I just want to make that very clear. But there is a genuine... And when you open a file, everything's got to be scanned by Defender. That takes uh, a fraction of a second, but you can perceive the difference. So to that extent, disabling Defender does make the system feel a bit more responsive. Oh, wow. So Ghost Spectre has even completely killed the OOB, and we're just sending a password to the administrator. Okay. And now we've got to set it again, so we can... Okay. Now we're in. Uh, yuck. Okay, I don't, I do not like this. No, uh, okay, don't, don't be put near, okay, that's, that's annoying. Oh, oh, the toolbox. Okay, so this comes with, while it has removed some Windows bloatware, uh, this comes with uh, some bonuses of its own. Now, while that was going, I've also downloaded Fox, and Fox OS, at least this far, it looks more like uh, Windows. This you would you wouldn't even know this was a distro so far. So let's go back. Okay, so we get a custom background. I actually like it. That looks cool. It reminds me a bit of Snow Leopard. And let's see if the claim to fame of getting rid of a bunch of services is true. Login is actually pretty slow for Windows. Okay, so there are fewer processes and there is okay, this is actually less than uh, what that other YouTuber found. Okay, so there's only a gigabyte of RAM in use for the whole system. So, okay. And they've also uh, killed the animations. And while this is a Windows 11 build, it's looking and behaving like 10. Uh, but it is, it's uh, the very first build and it doesn't see our network code. Uh, okay. Okay, I can try the DHCP. Hang. Okay, Fox is still going. So let's see uh, if we can fix Ghost Spectre. Oh, and I, I think they've. Oh no, that that's just a WTF. Why? Okay, so the only thing you could ever, besides testing malware, the only reasonable thing you could ever use this distro for is some sort of offline. Like if you're running a CNC machine offline, never connected to a network line. There's no other, this is just, uh, this is extreme. They have definitely, they've succeeded at reducing the resource usage, but no. On the bright side, there are no suspicious processes and there are a few processes in general. So I'll uh, give them a pass on that. Now uh, let's try Fox OS, which while I don't super trust the people behind it, uh, it seems closer to vanilla. Okay, and here's uh, the host setup. Okay, task schedule delete. And this is where it's doing some sort of post install. Oh, oh, we got we got a logo. ISO is free and not for sale. Ah, which reminds me that people do pay for uh, snake oil ISOs. And they've also, they've done, made it like Windows XP where the icons don't group. To me, that seems like an odd tweak. Okay, installing some things, installing a power plan. Okay, that's that's another tweak that will actually make performance difference. But you don't need don't need uh, a custom ISO for that. Applying tweaks, disabling hibernation, disabling remote terminal services, disabling. Okay. Oh my. So they're really people must really be trying to sell this. Made by Cat Gamer OP. Okay. Uh, Ooh, this is such a I, I I don't know, this is such a scary looking all caps. I'm just booting my other VM just nope nope the networking is fine. So it's not that there's something wrong with my VMware, it's just both of these ISOs managed to break the networking. So we need to run uh, this command. No we Oh, and this shows on every boot. Okay, that's not great. I, I installed this okay. Okay, and now it works. Maybe they did that to stop the Microsoft account creation. That's the only way, reason I could think they would do that. And we've still got all of our visual effects disabled. We can actually, uh, we can do that. We go over to system, then we go to about, and then we go to advanced system settings. Okay, so good. They left this on and they left that on. 
fair enough. This doesn't this doesn't really make a performance difference, but it does it does feel more responsive without the animations. You can see what the resource usage is out of the box. Okay, so they're definitely the claim that this is using very little in the way of resources seems to be true. 900 megabytes and 55 processes. So let's just see. Got any security? Okay, we got Windows security settings. Okay, but no, no uh, defender. What? Uh, I, I just, okay. So UAC is off. That's not a performance. Okay, like does it, is it that it, that there is no performance effect of having UAC disabled. That is not a performance tweak. What are these people doing? And then we got this firewall off. I, yeah, maybe for people who don't know how firewalls work, uh, firewalls don't, uh, like, no, the default Windows firewall setting is not adding latency. That is ridiculous. Yep, looks like there's no updating. So, okay. Now we could check, we can check activation just to see if that's been affected. No. Okay, okay, so that's still here. It's probably so they don't get slapped by Microsoft, but that is the least of your worries. Okay, well, I guess the only thing really left... Uh, okay, let's try this link. Where does this go? Okay, this just goes to this Discord where you can buy snake oil tweaks for real money. The ISO is free, but okay. There's drivers in here. Oh, and it's still... It's not that... Like, this is no... No better than any other windows. Browsers. Okay, and this is legitimately a good tool if you're on Windows and you want to use NVIDIA. MV clean install is good. Uh, this is fine. I don't get bundling all of this stuff. Like, people can download it. And here is all of the information about this. This uh, cat guy. Cat -o guy. Cat gamer OP. We can go to his Patreon, we can go to his TikTok, his Twitch, his Twitter, his YouTube. Uh, Cat Gamer OP, let's see. Okay, we get an NVIDIA driver guide. Best way to overclock an NVIDIA GPU, install multiple windows. Yeah, all of this looks fine. How to properly benchmark. Uh, that's good to know. Now, speaking of benchmarks, as I alluded to earlier, uh, I'm just going to pull up the videos I was watching of those benchmarks because inevitably if you're not convinced that this isn't a good idea if maybe you don't care maybe you have nothing to lose security wise uh, the only thing then really you got to worry about first of all is anti-cheats are not going to like this and a lot of anti-cheats don't like really out of date windows because they think you might be doing it for the sake of running a boot kit for cheats like vanguard isn't going to like it uh but okay so What's true is that these do out of the box use significantly less resources. Now, latency, let's see. Okay, this is latency mon. Now, latency mon, as far as I remember, yeah, that was my issue. So these are not, so, so you know how uh, that unit looks like a U? Uh, those are microseconds. Those are not milliseconds. There's a huge difference. Uh, that is, those are millionths of a second, not thousandths. So there is no possible way that any human is going to feel the difference. But okay, we've proven there is a difference. So here's Valorant, uh, which may or may not run. Now these are outlier results to me, uh, but maybe there's something going on here. Now this is, uh, th this is one of the better results. Uh, the other guy found basically no difference. Yeah, now this is another channel, Ineffable Benchmarks, who tried this out and uh, we can see again uh, that there is not a big difference and what is really unusual is sometimes stock windows 10 is beating the mods quite dramatically here which to me just indicates there's quite a bit of a margin of error and let's see uh, and you can look at frame times too uh, and one percent lows uh and it's pretty clear that there is not this huge difference Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can debloat uh, Windows 11, just the vanilla version that comes from Microsoft, no security risks, 
and we're not going to do anything crazy like get rid of defender uh, we're just going to install this and then we're going to set it up uh, for better privacy and without compromising security okay so now we got to name the device put anything you want i actually like that they added this back rather than just defaulting it to desktop in, as they did in uh, windows 10. now you can still if you have windows 11 pro you can skip the microsoft account uh, by doing uh, worker school sign in options and then domain join instead even if you don't actually have an active directory system and then you can just put in your username and your password if you want one now let's get rid of all of this junk now of course most of this is off but you cannot get rid of diagnostic data but we can do a bit better with uh, the tools that we're going to run once we get in to get rid of more of this okay so now we have the default uh, windows 11 experience and now we can debloat it now the tool i'm going to recommend for this is the Chris Titus Tech Tips tool because it's not the most aggressive, but it is one that is very unlikely to break your system and will actually leave you with a stable system that you can keep using rather than having to reinstall it every few months. Okay, so here we get our tweaks and we can, okay, we can create that. We can disable a bunch of stuff, get rid of telemetry, get rid of this, this. Hibernation uh, takes up a bunch of space on your home drive if you don't use it. Home group, location tracking, storage sense, you probably don't want. Uh, Wi-Fi sense, you probably don't want, but if you want uh, location services, basically it does the same thing as location services does on the Mac. Oh, shut up, that gets rid of a ton of telemetry and we can set a bunch of services to manual. Yeah, this one you probably don't, don't I wouldn't run any of these Adobe's. You can get rid of IPv6, but why would you? Uh, get rid of Copilot if you don't like it. You can get rid of the notification tray. Uh, some of these are pretty destructive and you can't easily undo. Now, this is one of the more extreme settings if you want something more like what you would get with one of those ISOs, but there's not a lot of point. Don't remove Edge. Uh, it, it, having a system without a browser is just a nuisance. Uh, don't remove OneDrive unless you really don't like it. Then you can. Uh, and you can configure oh no shut up tweaks if there's something specific you want. And there's also some nice presets up here in terms of what is recommendable and what is a bad idea. Here we can get rid of more stuff like suggestions, which will get rid of the bulk of telemetry, but it'll leave a few things that you might, you might, you might be more okay with. These app access, I, I, I wouldn't bother with these purely because regular Windows programs, which what most people use uh, are unaffected. Yeah. These are all these are all sane settings. So we can simply leave these as is and just run the standard tweaks. And then you're probably good. And now we can see down here that the tweaks are finished. And the benefit of setting the services to manual rather than disabled is, for example, if you have a printer, most of these tweak tools will get rid of the principal service, but if you have a printer, you probably want that. So now let's see how our resource usage is doing. We have 30 fewer processes than we did by default. And instead of our RAM surging up to two gigabytes, it's hovering at 1.6 gigabytes, which is not as low as the uh, questionable ISOs, but it's significantly lower and the CPU usage is lower. So we've pretty much achieved a lot of what the ISOs achieved and we've kept all of our functionality and of course we've kept all of our security our Windows Defender is still running just like it always did except for automatic sample submission which some people may find to be a security risk so that is going to be all for this video I hope you enjoyed it uh, please let me know in the comments below uh, if you agree or disagree with my uh, opinions about ISOs and of course there are always edge cases where these things might be useful, and I can respect that. But telling people to install these on their main computer is bad advice. So for now. Bye.